Life is Strange is a game well loved by a lot of people, including myself, but I think that's more in spite of its flaws than because it doesn't have many. I say this as someone who waited with bated breath for every episode of the original game. And if you're here to tell me that the games are bad, go away, I don't care, I like them, so do lots of other people, it doesn't matter if you don't. Life is Strange True Colors is the latest installment in the series, and here's the thing, I just spent 20 hours playing it in a marathon, and fundamentally, it takes everything that you loved about the original game, and does it better. You play through the story of Alex Chen, who can read the emotions of others in their auras, moving to the beautiful mountain community of Haven Springs, where you uncover a mystery and try to build a new home for yourself. Oh, and uh, spoilers for everything, by the way. Now I understand this is a controversial opinion because the original game is so well remembered by all of us, but to understand why True Colors is probably the best game in the series now, I want to talk through six things that it does better than the previous games. Firstly, dialogue. People have often criticized the dialogue of Life is Strange for being clunky, unnatural, clearly written by people who are trying to guess at what teenagers sound like and not always succeeding. And you know what? It's a fair criticism. It does kinda sound like that at times. True Colors definitely delivers better dialogue. It's as simple as that. It's better written. Characters sound like people and there's just more subtext to it. Secondly, the player character. Max Caulfield was criticized for being a somewhat bland protagonist, and you know what, not unfair. But Alex is a fully formed character with wants and needs and flaws and fears. You care so much about her. She was a child who was kind of lost in the foster system, and you can really see how that affected her. She has a full history of her own that deeply informs the story and decisions that you and she make. Max was seemingly a blank slate for you to project onto, which can totally work, but for a story that is so founded on building character relationships, I think Alex worked better. She's a little more limited in who she can be, but it meant that there were stronger character dynamics and more consistent arcs with how she interacted with other characters. She had a clearly defined place in this world and her own story. Alex being a fully formed character is also great for the queer relationship that a lot of people look for in Life is Strange. She fosters that queer relationship with Steph a lot more naturally than Max does, which I think a lot of people will find really valuable. Now the writers of True Colors did make one interesting decision, which you may agree or disagree with, which is that they decided to be more cutscene focused, with longer gaps between when you get to decide what Alex says or does. This is actually more akin to Life is Strange too, and let me explain why I think it worked. The original game has you decide almost every line of Max's dialogue. You're constantly interacting with what Max says or does. But most of those dialogue decisions aren't actually that important. You're interacting a lot, but it's often picking lines that mean mostly the same thing. I felt stripping them back and being more selective about where you could make decisions really helped with the pacing of the individual scenes and the character development because it meant that my decisions mattered more when I did something. I actually found myself thinking about them more, even if I was just picking a line of dialogue. And I think it meant that the writers actually had a better idea of how a scene was meant to play out. They could plan it more, making it more cohesive and helping it hit harder. So. True Colors does have less interactivity than the original game, but that's not because your choices matter less. And that leads us on to three, the cast of characters. Life is Strange has always been about the characters, that's basically all there is, but while we grew to love Max, Chloe, Kate, Joyce, even David in the original, the writers did make some odd choices with them. For example, Kate, a character we were actually invested in, virtually vanishes from the story after episode 2. That emotional through line is basically dropped. Likewise, even though Warren is a romantic interest and interactions with other characters like Steph and Alyssa do have consequences, we just never got enough time to know them properly and care about those consequences as much as we perhaps should have. And though Jefferson turns out to be the villain, it doesn't hit as hard as I think they intended because we don't have a hugely personal connection with him, either as a mentor or friend or enemy. True Colors instead narrows its focus to fewer characters and ensures you have time to get to know all of them really damn well. I mean, I was crying by the end of episode 1 and even more so in episode 2. The result of this is that the consequences of your decisions feel a lot more personal. 
When Jed Lucan eventually betrays you in episode 4, it hurts because he has been a father figure. In general, True Colors is just a more intimate story with more personal stakes. Eleanor's Alzheimer's, Charlotte's depression struggles, Ducky's sadness at the loss of his wife, Gabe's desire to form a new family, they're all deeply moving. Coupled with better dialogue and Alex being a fully formed character, True Colors just inevitably has a stronger cast. Fourthly, binary choices. The original game is sometimes criticised for the binary nature of its decisions, a good and a bad outcome, that Kate dies or she doesn't die, Alyssa is caught in the storm or she doesn't get caught in the storm. There were some more morally complicated decisions to be made, but a lot of it did come down to a good and a bad ending for each character. What I really loved about True Colours is that it has a more morally complicated ending, you might say. Choosing to leave or stay in Haven Springs at the end is more about how you view your journey with Alex and Ryan or Steph, the values that you have found in the story, than picking the, quote, right ending. Telling Riley about her grandmother's Alzheimer's isn't a good or bad decision in and of itself. It's about that relationship and that journey and who you feel you need to be honest with. It's down to your judgement of them as characters. The result of this is an ending that feels more your own, not really condemning you or praising you, but just being you. That it's special for the sake of it being your journey, and not because you got the good ending with that character. Now that's not to say that it's all like that, there are still better endings with certain characters, but I think it's still an improvement for a game that sells itself on your decisions mattering. Fifthly, mental illness. I mean, this really shouldn't be a surprise at this point, but this was something that really drew me to the original game, and I think it resonated with a lot of people. I was in an especially vulnerable place at the time, and it was something I could really empathise and connect with. So while I did really appreciate the discussion around Kate and her suicidality, it wasn't actually the best representation of depression and suicide, either in what it's truly like, or how to deal with it. And that's okay, I think there's a lot of value in discussing this stuff even if it's not perfect but trying its best. Now True Colors doesn't discuss it as explicitly as the original game, but it's an undercurrent to the events of the story. The pain that Charlotte expresses is complicated, that she hates her child because when she looks at him it reminds her of the pain of losing Gabe. That is a very difficult emotion to confront and deal with. And there's not a right answer, but it's very real, very down to earth. Likewise, the difficulties that foster children have are always there in the background. They're informing the characters, a part of their life and who they are, and I really liked that. I appreciated how complicated the mental illness felt in the story, acknowledging both how hard it is to help those people who struggle and empathising with those who do at the same time, even if it didn't confront it as openly as it did with, say, Kate on the roof that it was part of the fabric of life, even if it wasn't the entire plot. And sixthly, I get that this point is definitely more subjective, so you may or may not agree with me, but I want to talk about it, so I will. Sue me. I never liked how episode 5 in the original game focused on the consequences of Max's time travel powers, because the game was never meant to be about the consequences of her powers. They were never meant to be about her powers at all, really. Her powers were just a tool to explore the difficulties of growing up and building relationships and dealing with this thing called life. Having it suddenly be about how the universe is falling apart because she's using her powers too much, or the ethics of it, felt tonally and thematically off distracting me from what I really cared about and I think most people really cared about. The abstract dream sequence was just a little too weird for me, it was slow and quite disconnected from the main plot. But here's the thing, True Colours does also open episode 5 with a similar weird dream sequence. But I like it! It's a lot more integrally tied to the main plot and because Alex is a much more developed character, I cared a lot more about what happened in it. Likewise, though Alex has the power to see people's emotions and kind of read their minds, the game never really explores the ethics and consequences of those powers. It keeps its climax focused on the things people care about. It is just a tool to explore the relationships and world here. Episode 5 is the natural culmination to the mystery and character relationships that we've built across the previous episodes without the weird magic stuff that I felt undermined the original climax. 
But fundamentally, it's hard to understate just how much True Colors takes from the original game in its plot, its characters, atmosphere, its dynamics, you name it. You're arriving in a quaint small town full of life, an atmosphere that you just want to get lost in, but that also has a dark secret that you slowly unveil. I think the developers learned from Life is Strange 2, which I, and I know a lot of other people, found harder to get into, partly because it didn't have that consistent sense of place and characters. But Haven Springs is just as vivid as Arcadia Bay, and as I've said, the characters even more so. It's the sort of place that you really do just want to sit and listen to the music. Which of course, it lets you do. There are also clear parallels between some characters. Mac clearly plays a similar role to Nathan Prescott, while Jed Lucan plays a similar role to Jefferson. The plot, though I would not say is copying the original, I would say is structurally very similar and follows some of the same tropes. Episodes 1 and 2 are all about setting the scene, introducing you to the characters, with a strong emotional through line that draws it all together. Kate's suicidality and Gabe's death. Episode 3 is uncovering the mystery and a lot more lighthearted than the previous two episodes. Episode 4 ends with a father figure character betraying you because you've found out their dark secret, the little dark secret about the town. And you spend half of episode 5 in a weird dream sequence dealing with a lot of personal stuff before you return and stop the impending disaster, where your relationships that you've built up across the story determine how that sort of pans out. And I don't know how to quantify this, but it just sort of feels similar. You'll know it when you play it. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing at all. I think it's awesome. It took all of the things that I loved about the original game and did it better. It's definitely its own world full of its own characters, but it channels a lot of what made me so attached to Arcadia Bay and its story. If True Colors can be criticized for something, it'll be these two things. One, not much problem solving. There were quite a number of neat little moments in the first and second games where Max or Sean and Daniel needed to solve puzzles, both with their powers and without. Now, it was never a puzzle game, but I think those scenes using that different type of thinking gave a bit of variety to the games. It was a strength. While you do solve problems in True Colors, it never takes much thinking, and it's not usually with creative use of your powers. Something I feel that they could have done more of. It would have only improved the game a bit. And two, Steph. Steph is the main female romantic interest in the story, and therefore quite an important one because 70% of players picked her. She's a great character, she really is, but she is unfortunately one that I think we know kinda the least. It's not that we don't know her, but that we don't have as many scenes where she gets to be vulnerable with us and us be vulnerable with her. Compare that to Ryan, who has a really touching and authentic moment where she feels someone else's joy through him for the first time as they connect over Gabe's death. Steph was just missing a scene like that, I felt. I get being nostalgic over the original Life is Strange game. It came to me in a time that I needed it and really connected with it. And that's okay. If you still prefer Arcadia Bay and all its characters to Haven Springs, that's fine. You hold on to that memory and that love but I reckon you really will like True Colors. These games are deeply personal, and how good the writing is often doesn't really matter that much when we have that personal connection, because our soul is there, you know, in some weird way. But, but with all of this said, for me, True Colors isn't just a great game, but it's the game that Life is Strange has been trying to be for a long time, but never quite hitting the mark. Stay nerdy, and I'll see you in the future.